Hi, welcome back to the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. I'm Jesus Ramirez. In this video, I'm going to show you an insanely powerful tip to enhance texture and detail in Photoshop. I'm going to show you non-destructive techniques that will allow you to apply selective sharpening. Now, just to be clear, this tutorial is not about sharpening the entire image, it's about targeting specific areas of an image. If you're looking for a tutorial that will teach you about sharpening the entire image, then check the link down below in the description is my tutorial on how to sharpen in Photoshop. It teaches you everything that you want to know about sharpening. But in this tutorial, we're going to focus on targeted sharpening. Okay, let's get started. We're going to work with this portrait and this image has already been developed. It already has tonal adjustments and color adjustments. And the final step of every image, of course, is sharpening. And this image has already been sharpened globally, but now we're going to focus on enhancing the detail and texture of the image. And before we actually get into the sharpening effect, I'm going to show you an example that's going to teach you how the filter, the high pass filter works. That is the main filter that we're going to use for this effect and you need to know how it works. I don't want to give you a recipe, a step-by-step -step tutorial without really showing you how and why it works. So we're going to take just a moment and explain how this filter works. So the very first step is to right click and convert this layer into a smart object because we want to work non-destructively. We want to be able to come back and edit adjustments at a later time. Then I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac to duplicate the smart object. With this duplicate copy, I'm going to rename the layer and call it Low. And I'm going to press Control J, Command J on the Mac once again to duplicate the layer and I'll call this layer High. Then with the High layer selected, I'm going to hold Shift and click on the Low layer and then press Control G, Command G on the Mac to put that into a group and I'll call the group Example. This is just for the example of how the sharpening works. I'm going to expand the group and I'm going to select the low layer and disable the high layer. So we're working with the low layer and I'll also disable the portrait layer so that you're sure that we're only working with this layer. So with this low layer, I'm going to apply a filter, a filter that you probably already know. But before I do so, I'm going to double click on the zoom tool to see the image at 100%. And I'm going to hold the space bar, click and drag and pan up to her face. Then I can go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So I'm sure you've seen this before. This is just a filter that blurs the image, right? We remove all the detail. In other words, we're removing the high frequency information. We're left with the low frequency information. So I'll select the radius of three and then press okay. So as you can see, I removed all the detail, all the high frequency information. Like many other tools in Photoshop, the blur filter has an opposite filter. I'll enable this layer and I'll show you what that filter is. If you go into filter, other, high pass, you have a filter that does the opposite. This filter removes the low frequency information and it keeps the high frequency information. More specifically, high pass retains edge details in the specified radius where the sharp color transitions occur and suppresses the rest of the image. So notice that as I adjust this slider, you can see that I'm only keeping details. And if I drag the slider all the way to the end, notice that I essentially bring back the original image, which is not what we want to do. So. I'm going to add the same radius that I used in the Gaussian blur. I'll add three pixels. Notice that the filter is now only keeping the detail in the image, the high frequency information. So high pass look for edges in the image and expanded the radius three pixels. And that's what you see on screen. So anything that is not detail, not part of the high frequency information of the layer becomes 50% gray. And that's going to be really useful when we apply a blending mode. So I'll press OK for now. Now, using blending modes, I can blend these two layers together to get back the original image, which is the portrait. So select the high layer, the layer that contains the detail of the image. Anything that is not detailed is 50% gray. Then open the list of blending modes. And what we want to do is blend the two layers together, the high and low layer. And we want to blend them by removing everything that is 50% gray, which means that we'll only keep the detail. And to do so, we can use any one of these blending modes. All these blending modes remove 50% gray. The one that we're going to use is linear light. And once I select it, you'll notice that we almost have the original image back, almost there. 
what I'll do now is simply bring down the opacity to 50% and I have pretty much the original image back. If I double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen, you'll see that when I disable the example group, it'll look virtually the same as the portrait layer. It's not 100% the same, but it's close enough. It's about 99 or 98% the same. And the reason that I went through this long explanation was just to simply show you what the high pass filter is doing. A lot of times when you're learning Photoshop, people just show you the steps, but they don't really explain to you what the filter is actually doing. And that was the purpose of this example here. Also, for those of you that are more advanced and who are paying a little attention, you'll notice that what I just did here is frequency separation. I have the low frequency layer and the high frequency layer above. So the layer without detail and the layer with detail and combined, they create the final image. And this is um, frequency separation, which as you may know, it's a popular retouching technique. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see a frequency separation tutorial from PTC. But anyway, now that you know what the high pass filter is doing, I'm just going to select the example group and I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to duplicate the portrait layer by pressing Control J, Command J on the Mac. And I'll call it high pass because that's the filter that we're going to apply. So I'm going to go into filter, other, high pass. Notice that in the preview window, all the low frequency information is gone. We just have the detail, the high frequency. And we're going to use this detail information and apply it to our portrait selectively in areas that we want to enhance the detail and texture. And you can set the radius, which determines how much sharpening you're going to apply to this image. I'll leave it at three for now and I'll press OK. And I'll select the linear light blending mode and I'll bring the opacity to 50% for now. Now, this is exactly the same layer that I had a moment ago in the example group. I just wanted to show you how to do it without having to go through the Gaussian blur steps. One other thing I want to mention is that in Photoshop or any other software, you cannot really add detail to the image. You can only create the illusion of detail by adding contrast on edges. So that's really what we're doing here. So creating the illusion of more detail. I'm going to select the zoom tool and I'm going to zoom in and I'm gonna work at 100%. You always want to work at the 100% view to get an accurate representation of what is going on. Any other zoom level could be misleading, so try to work at 100% if you can. So with this high pass layer, obviously it adds a sharpening effect to the entire image and we don't want that. We want to selectively sharpen the image. Now, before we do that, I also wanna mention that we are currently in the linear light blending mode, but you could also use overlay, soft light, hard light, and vivid light. So any one of these blending modes. For this tutorial, I'll stick with overlay. And now I'll move on to the step of selectively sharpening the image. So with this high pass layer selected, I can create a layer mask, but I'm going to hold Alt before I click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask, which means that it's going to hide the high pass effect. Now with the brush tool, and with white as my foreground color, I can paint in detail. So I can paint in detail in her eyes, for example. See that? Before and after. Her eyebrows. Before and after. And you can also duplicate the layer by pressing Control J, Command J on the Mac. And fill this layer mask with black so that we can start from scratch. Black is currently my background color, so I can press Control Backspace, that's Command Delete on the Mac, to fill with the background color, which is black. Everything is invisible. And now I can use the second high pass layer to bring in more detail on her hair. And obviously I'm going fairly quickly here for the example. You want to spend a little more time when working on your images. So that's before and after. And the reason that you want to have separate layers and not work on a single layer is so that you can fine tune the high pass. So when I expand the smart object, you'll see the high pass label. If you double click on it, it brings up the high pass filter controls once again, and you can make adjustments to the high pass layer if you want. So that is one of the reasons why it's good to work non-destructively. It gives you the flexibility to make changes at any time. And of course you can keep fine tuning all the details in the image, maybe even bring more detail in to the texture of the camera. 
it's totally up to you what you want to sharpen on your image. What I'll do now is I'll hold Shift and click on both layers, then press Control G, Command G on the Mac to put them into a group. And I can just call this effect Sharpen Texture slash Details. And when I zoom out, you can see the before and the after. Notice how in this zoom level, you can't really see what's going on. I'm at 21.92%. So I'll double click on the zoom tool and zoom into 100%. And then you'll be able to see the before and the after. And you can see the texture in the camera as well. Now I do have one more trick for you. It doesn't have to do with sharpening, but it has to do with high pass layers. So I'll show it to you in this tutorial. For now, I'll disable the Sharpen Texture Details group and I'll select the High Pass layer and duplicate it by pressing Ctrl J, Command J in the Mac and drag it out of the group. Then I'll right click and select Delete Layer Mask. And obviously it applies the High Pass effect to the entire layer. You can see that there, right? And I'll increase the opacity to 100%. And the trick that I want to show you is that you can press Control I, Command I on the Mac on that high pass layer to create a softening effect. So you can actually soften skin with this same filter. So notice that I inverted the information on that layer. And I can then hold Alt Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask. And I can paint in softness in the skin. Obviously, I would have to fine tune the adjustment by maybe bringing down the opacity and maybe painting a better layer mask. I got a little bit of her eye there, which I didn't intend to, but you get the idea. You can spend a lot of time in your images fine tuning the effect, but I just wanted to show you how you could use high pass to also add a softening skin effect. And if you enjoy this tutorial, don't forget to check out my tutorial on how to sharpen images in Photoshop. That tutorial is all about sharpening the entire image. So check it out. There's a link right below in the description. Let me know down in the comments below if these techniques were useful to you. If this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, then don't forget to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again in the next tutorial.